Hi, my name is Paul Cresswell and welcome to Paul's Tackle Reviews. The purpose of this YouTube channel is to give you some reviews of tackle that's been out and been used by an unsponsored, unbiased angler, which is me. I always say though, just because something works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you, but I'll give you all the information to help you make up your own mind. Today I'm going to look at the Preston ICM and ICS uh, feeder systems, I think you'd call them. And the basics of this is that you thread a stem onto your line and then there's various things including a bomb, pellet feeder, method feeder, maggot feeder, a, a cage feeder and a banjo feeder and you can simply change those in seconds to change the way you're fishing and to hopefully help you catch more fish. What it does, it lets you have less rods set up because basically one rod can, can cover nearly all of this and it also makes you change more when you're fishing. So you sat there, nothing's happening because it's easy, you might go from a method feeder to a pellet feeder and it might suddenly switch on. I've used these now for around a couple of years and I use them all year round. There are two different types. There's the ICM and I always say the M stands for mini and they're smaller and mainly use them in winter but not exclusively. And then there's the ICS system, which is the standard stuff, which is slightly larger and bigger capacities of baits. I used to use the Matrix ones, but I did, and that was interchangeable, but it was certainly more fiddly than this, and I didn't really like the Matrix method feeder. I also feel that we're going to look at the moulds that you use to mould your bait onto the feeder, and I think Preston's really have the best ones with the push mechanism as well. So I don't quite know how I'm going to do this because I'm going to try and get the camera so we can zoom in because if I stand here holding these up you're not going to see anything. So I'm going to cut away and do some close-ups and then I'll come at the end to round it up and also tell you what videos are coming next. So I'm back again and I've got the camera positioned hopefully where I can show you what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the ICM and that's the mini. So this is a smaller uh, stem and you get stems every time you buy something and you get the little caps as well that go on top. And I've just threaded my line through and my line is loose through there now. So what I'm going to do is tie a loop on the end of there and I'll just show you how I would tie a loop. So I've got my line there, I've got a loop at the end. I'll form a circle like that. And then I've got one of these devices. So put the whole thing in, turn it round once and back. And then if you can see, I thread that, but not on it all. I thread it onto in between those two spikes, pull it tight and then ease it round. And you can see the knot starting to form. And I'll just put a little bit of spit on the knot to ease it. And there you see, we've got a perfect little figure of eight and a little loop on the end. Trim that down. Normally using scissors, but I haven't brought any up with me today. So there we have the perfect little loop. And we've also got the stem on the line as well. You can see them both there. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to attach A Drennan Mini Connector. Now, if I try and show you this again, you'll see there. Um, I've got some photos and I'll put lots of photos up, but I use the Drennan one. 
and what you get with the Drennan is a little sleeve that goes over the middle but on either end you can hook on the line so I will put the line over there hook it on and slide the sleeve up and then when I want to put my hook length on I'll simply slide the sleeve that way and attach the hook length to the other hook at the end so then we bring that down and I've got the stem with the connector on Preston do some connectors and like I say I photoed them both side by side there's the Preston one and with the Preston one you put your line through there through the end of there and then tie a knot and then that slides down and you access somewhere to hook your hook length on the top I've tried both of these and I'll show you why later on I use the Drennan but I've also I've tried them both and I don't think either is any better than the other but I think you get more flexibility with the Drennan one so there we have on my line we have the connector so I now want to put something on so I slide the little bit off the end and I'm going to put the pellet feeder on so I've got the pellet feeder put the line through the back push the connector up and then slide the little stopper back on so there we have the pellet feeder attached with the connector on the bottom What I'm now going to do is I'm going to change it for the method. So is simply do things in reverse. I take the cap off, push the connector down, slide that up and the line comes out. Go to the back of the method feeder, put the line in, push the stem up bring the little plastic stopper back and you can see there I've gone from the pellet feeder to the method feeder what I'm not going to do is show me changing that over to every single one because you've got the idea you take the little cap off you slide it out you take what you want off and then you put the other item on so let's just look in a bit more detail at the method feeder there and I use this an awful lot in winter it is very small as 50p what it does it delivers a nice little what I think is a mouthful of bait so a fish is going to come in and probably take the lot and I, I also use it for F1s in summer because I think it's a nice little target bait for the fish to come and also skimmers in the summer and there is a mold to go with it and that's the blue mold as you can see um, it it has the the spring mechanism lots of old bits of gunk dropping out there so you would fill your mold up put that on press it down press the sides take it off and you'd have your little feed ready to go you obviously put your hook length in as well and put your bait in so in terms of baits I use with this I do use an awful lot of dead maggots with this and if I turn up somewhere and I don't know how it's fishing just put a dead maggot on with that small feeder a few pellets and you can soon tell what kind of day it's going to be but I've also used four mil six mil I've used washers with it and these are particularly good when you're using expanders and I think expanders in winter are very good because it's a soft bait the, the fish can come and pick up so just in the same way as a change there you can change to the bomb 
So just back on the method, there's two sizes, there's 16 gram and 28 gram. So there's two sizes of those. On the pellet feeder, and this is a small one, and you can see the holes in the back there. And once it goes in the water, the water comes in from there and pushes the feed out. And the pellet feeders available in 15 and 25 grams. We've got the bombs and there's two sizes of bombs and they're 10 and 20 grams. And sometimes in winter, just casting a little 10 gram feeder uh, bomb out is perfect with a single bait doesn't create a big splash if anything it's like a big pellet going in and I think they're really useful you can use a standard kind of feeder and they're obviously tiny and there's also a maggot feeder and I do like these maggot feeders so there they are and what you what you do is once it's on and you want to fill it you turn that away from you and you get a a gap there to put your bait in, turn it back to you, dunk it under the water to stop them wriggling too much and cast it out. So that can be used in line, but you can also get the stems with a swivel on the end. So if I put that there, through there, so you can use it on a paternoster kind of setup and if, if I'm honest, I probably prefer using the maggot feeder in that way. I don't, I don't really like it as an inline, but plenty of people use it like that. So I might have two rods set up, one with my little stem on and another with a pattern set up where I can use the maggot feeder. So that's all of the all of the ICS stuff and I'll just take that off and then you can see we're back to the stem and the connector. Now the stems on the ICM are a different size so we've got that stem there and then the size for the ICS is a bigger stem and so you can't just put the ICS onto the ICM stem it will just not hold it will rattle about it might even come off so you have to use the right stem with the right one so let's say I'm fishing and I want to go to the ICS because I want to put maybe more bait in so what I would do is I would take off the connector so I've taken the connector off and I would then slide off the loop so there so I've got the loop and I've got my other stem that I want to use. I've then got a Drennan long baiting needle. So I'll put a photo of this separately. You can see the length of that. So I would push that straight through my new stem. Hopefully this will work first time. I haven't got any tension on the line. But there's a tiny little hook on the end and then you can just pull that through. It does work better if you've got a bit of tension and it's through the rod. And then I'm just putting the loop back on. Onto there. And I'm sliding the central bit down. And you can see and I'm doing it with the pressure of video and reaching over the camera. And that didn't take long at all. On the bank, you can do that in no time. That then opens you up 
to use in all the all the ICM uh, all the ICS stuff. Now there's the method feeder, and there is you might think well you, that can go on either way, but there is a bottom and a top. So we're taking off that, putting the line down the middle, pushing that back through, hold it there while I reconnect, and we're back on the method. And the, the beauty of using that to change is you can leave your hook length attached as well. There's no problem because you're taking off the bead with your hook length. So. I've changed over to the method for the ICS and a bigger mold there again is the springy mold. So let me look at the ICS, the method. This is actually the small. That's available in 20, 30 and 45 grams. There's a large available in the same size as and an extra large in 30, 45 and 60 grams and they will cast an awful long way because they're really aerodynamic. We've got the pellet feeder and that's the small, that's available in 20 and 30 grams. There's a medium 20, 30 and 45 and a large in 30 and 45. I, I don't do a lot of range fishing and I don't tend to put a lot of bait in so I've only got certain sizes of these. We've got the maggot feeder again and this is bigger, it's the same mechanism for opening and then closing and you can also get the long stem with the swivel on if you want to use it paternoster style as well. So I'll put that through there. The MAGA small 20 and 30, that's a small and you can also get large 20, 30 and 40. There is a cage feeder. I don't really use the cage in line. I prefer it paternoster, but sometimes I do. Small 20 and 30, that's the ones in front of you. Medium 20, 30, 45 gram large 30 and 45. There is also the bombs available and um, I think they're 20 and 30 grams and then lastly there is the banjo feeders and Preston don't do a hybrid feeder but I think this is their hybrid feeder so it's got very tall sides you'll see there and that's when if you're using a method, you'll cast in and the bait will cascade down the side. With the banjo, it stays very enclosed. I tend to use these in winter. And the, in fact, the ICS mold fits the very smallest banjo. And then there's another one there for the next one. So that's called a micro banjo. That's 20, 30 and 45 grams. There's a small available, that one, 20, 30 and 45, and a large available in the same sizes with obviously a different mould available. You can get elasticated stems. Most of the places I fish don't allow elasticated fixed settings. I'm not a huge fan myself anyway, um, so I tend to stick to the running, running rigs. What you can see is there's an awful lot of options. Each one of them is about three quid a piece. So you can spend a lot and you can also end up with a tub with an awful lot of weight in. So I wouldn't suggest going out and buying everything, but if there's something you want to try, obviously buy two of whatever I'm buying and try them out and then see where you want to go. So I hope you found all of that interesting and useful and it's given me maybe a few ideas that you could try using these or using stuff from other manufacturers to try and give you more options when you're out on the bank. If you found it useful and you liked the video give me a thumbs up that helps spur me on a little bit. 
Um, I've also got seven other videos now on my YouTube channel and I'm going to put a list there for you just to have a look through and some of these have got over a thousand views and good comments from people as well and then I tend to be during lockdown doing about one video a week so next week I'm hoping to do the map shallow kits the one piece top kits 1.8 meters long I'll tell you all about them how I use them but I'm also going to cover the the issue of how they fit onto Mava number four sections and Browning as it will be number three sections and how they work together the video after that I'm going to look at the roofs I use to put my rods and my top kits uh, safely and I've got products there from Matrix and from Browning as well. If you hit subscribe, you'll get automatically notified about the forthcoming videos, so you won't miss any of those. Until I see you again, tight lines.